Hello, and welcome to another episode of Solipsis Watched. I'm your host, The Social Solipsist, and this week, or rather over the last month or two, I watched The Umbrella Academy Season 1, which aired, aired? Is that the right word anymore? Streamed, released, in 2019. This is a bit of a surprise. Now, um, this is one that, this is a Netflix original production. So I think it came across my view mostly because I was probably watching Netflix and it, um, it you know, they run their ads and stuff. Um, but it also got pretty good reception upon release. It was one of those things that Netflix liked to boast about. Oh, oh we got so and so many millions of streams um, when it released. And it, it came out during a period that was um, not like super uh, busy in terms of other releases. But I think it's something that has been at least something that I basically didn't hear about again after its initial release to the point that I didn't even realize it's got multiple additional seasons that came after. Um, I thought I was in for a one season thing and I only watched one season for the purposes of this video, but um, spoilers on my feelings, I'm going to continue watching it. I was pleasantly surprised by this show because I was most worried, certainly at the time and still to, the, uh, to some extent now, that superhero media is being very overdone it's a it is being done to death the genre is being um just beaten until it gives up every penny it can give um and so i was quite worried that this was going to be another superhero adaptation that is pretty okay but doesn't say anything super special uh, and I am glad to say that I was pretty wrong. Um, this is not really a show about superheroes most of the time. This is a show about... Um, how do I say this in a way that won't get me bonked by YouTube or, or you know, set it if I, I don't want to set off anyone else's triggers either. Um, this is a show about... Uh, recovering from bad people. This is a show about um, what happens when a bunch of kids are raised by somebody who shouldn't be raising children. This is a show about what it means to have superpowers in a world that doesn't really otherwise have superpowers and the ramifications of that in general, but especially when you're in the spotlight as a child. Um, it is a show about what it's like to have a relationship with a bunch of other, for want of a better phrase, weirdos that are supposed to be your siblings, but you barely really understand. Um, and it's about unpacking the things that happen in your childhood or in your your periods of growth and how the coping mechanisms that you develop or the lack thereof can uh, continue to harm you and others throughout your life. And I adore this show for what it does in all those respects because... I think some of the strongest, the, the best reason I have always felt to do superhero media is to not for the sake of its superhero-ness. Um, I have a whole thing about Superman and why Superman is incredibly boring. And it's not just, you know, the, the, the super, like the surface level, of course he's boring thing, but what makes superheroes interesting, oh, that's a topic I could just go on for hours about. I'm going to keep this short, I promise. Um, what makes superheroes interesting is the things that they struggle with, especially when they are given 
uh, they are in a situation or they have powers such that it would appear that their lives should be better. And the reality is that their, their lives are not better and often they are worse. And so some of my favorite superhero media are the things where you are deeply and personally reminded that the superheroes under all of their powers are people and they have suffered many of the same things as everyone else and in fact because of their circumstances they may have suffered a whole bunch more and may be continued to put may continue because of their powers to be put in situations where they are not going to cope well because they are still one person so i really love that about 80 percent of this sh- the first season of the show is basically just unpacking the baggage of this family of superheroes and what it meant to grow up together and to see and do the things they did and to live in a house that was as deeply dysfunctional um, as it was. And to see how all of these already all of the a lot of the characters are already kind of unique in terms of their powers and they're interesting in their own right in that way but what's even more interesting is um the character development that goes on in terms of uh what the coping mechanisms of each of these characters were what they were subjected to what they've seen what their um histories are and what sometimes extraordinary traumas that they have suffered and what kind of people they've turned into in their, you know, reasonably young adulthood, you know, um, they're all supposed to be the same age, although admittedly, so the casting is extremely good. I'm going to tangent for a second. The the casting is extremely good, but these, they are all supposed to be the same age with one obvious exception for narrative reasons. Um, they are not, remotely all the same age looking but that's it's a minor quibble in the grand scheme of things um but seeing how all of these different characters um evolve or don't evolve and how what their coping mechanisms are and what they what they are driven to do especially as they have grown into individual people rather than as a group um what does what what has life dealt them and um, how have they grown similarly or entirely differently from each other? It's really, really interesting. I'm going to avoid talking too much about the niceties of the individual episodes or the arc of the, the show as a whole. I do need to talk about the overall arc a little bit in in order to talk about the context of the last two episodes because when I said 80% I meant 80% of this show is really good and the weakest part is the last two episodes because it goes from a show that is about um these kids and all of the people around them and all of the people with some distant relationship to them, whether they know it or not, and how they cope with the hands they've been dealt. Um, and then because the show needs to, feels compelled to wrap up with something narratively bombastic the last two episodes start to throw away some of the character some of the character motivation and the reasonableness of everyone's actions and the way you can follow like it, it's a it's a problem because of the contrast because in the first eight episodes you see all these characters making sometimes awful decisions but you understand deeply why they made those decisions because you've been taught you've been shown all these things about them and who they are and what's wrong with them what's going on with them what they haven't you know addressed in themselves and how that affects them um and unfortunately because that is done so well before when it 
it's not even like particularly awful in the last two episodes. It's just by contrast, it's not as good. And so characters start to make decisions that don't seem entirely in line with the rest of their behaviors. And it's not even just like there's plenty of char- there's plenty of growth as well, even in what amounts to a relatively short amount of narrative time. Um, the growth and the the things that they learn about themselves and each other like that all goes a long way in a relatively short amount of time. But then the last two episodes need to have this um, the traditional. Um, uh, superhero uh, spectacle the fights the the you know the threats the things that are traditionally super heroic that require extraordinary power um, in order to deal with and while it still keeps a thread of the these things are due to our dysfunctions um, as individuals and, and as a family, it is not nearly as satisfying in that regard. In fact, I really wish that they had shirked convention entirely and that the conclusion of the arc would have been, in a traditional sense, extremely disappointing, but in a narrative sense for the show to be much more um, satisfying by rather than having a series of extended fights to finally show what everybody's capable of because it's used fairly sparingly in the rest of the show and to good effect that instead of finally showing everybody at their and their power um that instead it had said once again this is not going to be solved by the use of your super heroics it's going to be solved by working on being better people and being compassionate and understanding and showing forgiveness and um, recognizing the faults in others and in yourself. Um, And am I like, does it, does it ruin the show? By no means. No, not at all. Um, And it gives a hook, not a super satisfying hook necessarily, but it gives a hook for the next season. Um, I just was so enamored and sometimes kind of emotionally wrecked by the power of some of the episodes of this show that um, to have it revert to form, revert to genre uh, at the end was a bit unsatisfying. But otherwise, I was really pleased with what's here. This is an adaptation of a comic book and... um, I may have to go read it. Um, I am fascinated by what the adaptation might have looked like of this in the first place. Now, as far as the actual production of the show, I think that also, well, I always try and talk about both the content and the context of of anything I watch. But I, I think that also deserves equal praise because the production of this show is also very good. Um, there is some of the, at the time, extremely popular use of a pop song that's a bit on the nose. I've talked about this trend before, um, in order to tell you what to think or how to feel, or just like a, a, a a word that is contextually appropriate in the lyrics that goes with the scene. There's some use of that, but it is used sparingly and effectively, And the rest of the music and sound design in the show is really, really good. And sound is an important factor in a lot of things that go on. Um, There's also just really good video production on this. And while it does stray into the territory of some scenes being overly dark, um, I don't think it is necessarily a negative i think it's used to good effect even if it's used perhaps a little more often than i wish um scenes of light and darkness are used very effectively with mood lighting 
um, in in particular some interior shots where it's like you, you like I would specifically notice oh um, there are lights on in this room and I can see them glowing over there but they're casting almost no light into the room and for the tone and narrative that they're going for in the scene it's like totally appropriate for them to do that um so i really appreciate what was artistically done with the use of light and shadow i think there's also a lot to be said for um costuming set design and while nothing is really there to blow your mind in terms of the set di- set design and production everything is used to really good effect if anything i would say it it's almost done a disservice at times because the all these kids are growing up in you know an eccentric mansion basically and you definitely get to see bits and pieces of this mansion and it is it is decked out but because so much of the goings on inside of it are really supposed to be about how the kids don't care about what's in the mansion like the 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 all of the all of the dressing the set dressing is not what matters to them what matters is their emotional tone and what's going on with them as individuals as they try and you know grapple with the goings on of the show like in in a in a way that's absolutely necessary you can't like have them all being somber in a room that's full of decoration and color but i th- it, I, I sort of simultaneously want to see what that looks like in full lighting and at the same time feel like they did a perfect job of saying this is this this set is really well dressed and we're deliberately not going to show it to you very well because that's what you that's how you're supposed to feel in the scene you're supposed to feel like none of this matters they could have they they could just as easily be doing this in you know the living room of some rundown house um and it would have the the same tone but because because the context is all the more powerful um so the cinematography is also really good like sound design uh set design costuming um all of that excellent uh character casting i think is pretty solid across the board there are some characters that have a bit less um acting depth um but it's also a little hard to tell because all of them are supposed to, or a lot of the characters are supposed to be somewhat, you know, um, emotionally reserved or emotionally distraught or, uh, or stunted in some way or another in terms of their development. Um, but generally speaking, uh, I'm really pleased with, um, basically all of the casting, uh, in particular, um, the one of the characters, um, number four, Robert Sheehan, is his is the actor's name. Does an inc- I've never seen him in anything else before. I think he's Irish. Um, he's fantastic in this. Uh, like, really does some of the finest acting in the show in general, and that's not for lack of good acting in the show. Um, so casting across the board, um, really quite solid. Um, uh, and you know what, how old is this guy? There, there is one character. Okay. He's 19 now, but, um, there's one character that is cast younger. Um, he's kind of, he, I mean, he's supposed to look like a kid. And at the time, I guess he would have been... 16 17 um uh aiden gallagher great job i mean uh great like i'm always complimentary of young actors when they deserve it because i don't know kids aren't great actors most of the time i I think a lot of great acting comes from understanding the world um and having experience and so a lot of a lot of young actors a lot of kid actors are not very good and this guy is really good really pleased with it um there's also some you know interesting cameos and stuff um that i that i enjoyed not in the sense of like oh look who it is but just like huh i didn't necessarily think of that person as being cast as as 
necessarily even being um, an actor, but like, oh, that's, they're really well cast in this. Um, so like casting across the board, really, really solid. Um, I I could talk a little, eh, I, I think, no, I, I could I could talk about the tone a little bit, um, if only because this show does a pretty good, this, this show was hard to watch. The show um, is, it is dark and it is very honest and it is very emotional. And um, depending on who you're, you are and what your personal experiences have been, there are probably going to be some stories in here or some experiences that are really emotionally impactful and personal to you. Um, and so I, this show was, was hard to get through at times. And I was actually expecting the show to be um, tonally a little bit funnier. And that's not to say that there isn't humor in this, but it is very, very dry. Um, in it's there is nothing there there are there are very few things in the show that you would ever consider laughing out loud at um even when there are slapsticky moments um they are used so well in terms of their blending between drama and action and comedy that um you sort of forget to laugh because it doesn't seem appropriate um even though even in context, it is kind of funny. So part of me wishes this was a little bit more digestible, but I know if I actually asked for that, it would have sacrificed the um, the power behind the stories they were telling. Um, so I, I wasn't expecting to have it be this impactful, but it was, and I might have wanted something else, but that's that, that doesn't mean I actually would want them to change it having watched it now so yeah i was really kind of surprised in a whole bunch of ways by this show um and i will definitely watch the next one i know it's been a while since i've um done a whole season of a tv series i think i've only actually done one other it was the mandalorian but um I like doing these. It's a little hard. Well, it's even harder to do than just watching a movie a week, which is also already sometimes a task. Um, but it's the kind of thing I enjoy doing anyway. Um, if you have or haven't seen this show or were curious about it, um, of course, leave a leave a comment. I'm curious what you what you thought about it. I could see this being a show that was disappointing to some people purely based off of wanting more superhero -y things and not getting them. But um, I think what they produced here is really excellent. I'm very happy with it. Anyway, um, thank you guys for watching another episode of Solpsis Watched. I've been your host, The Social Solpsist, and I'll see you guys next time.